Welcome everyone, it's Dr. Stephen Lindner. We are going to be looking at an overview of the neural system. Now, I know it says nervous system. Um, I'm a stickler when it comes to words. I prefer neural, uh, nervous. No one likes to be nervous. No one wants to be nervous. So um, I prefer to refer to it as the neural system. And I kind of put this picture up here just for like funsies, but it really sets a message when we talk about the neural system where many, many years ago, and I've heard this from uh, many of my patients that are seniors, they remember when computers first came out, they were massive, they were large, and they had these like coolants and these air conditioning units, and they had these special rooms that were required to kind of cool them off that they would overheat and they were just large and now what we see happening is that because of these chips we can decrease the size of the computers and yet they get faster and faster and faster so what we see here with uh, homer simpson is the the processing unit the brain and the spinal cord is getting smaller and smaller and smaller but yet with smartphones and smart watches and all these devices, things are getting faster and faster and faster. So one of the first things I'd like for you to understand is that when we talk about the neural system, we could divide it into a central neural system and a peripheral neural system. So CNS stands for central neural system and the PNS stands for peripheral neural system. And it would be important to know, well, what makes up the CNS and what makes up the PNS? Now, it's easiest to understand this, that the central neural system is everything central, right, in the center. And all we have in the center is the brain and the spinal cord. That's it. That's all we have to the central neural system. So if you ever asked a question to identify whether it's the CNS or the PNS, if it's not brain and spinal cord, then it has to be part of the PNS, the peripheral neural system, which is everything that goes into the periphery, right? Everything outside of that. So coming off of the brain, you're going to have nerves. We just call them cranial nerves. And we're going to go over that today, whether it's, whether it's a nerve that goes to the eyes, uh, whether it's a nerve that goes to the nose, a nerve that goes to the mouth, we have cranial nerves. When they come off the spine, we call them spinal nerves. Okay, so these are biggies. We'll talk quite a bit about spinal nerves and cranial nerves. Ganglia or ganglion, uh, a ganglia is a group of nerve cell bodies. It's a group of nerve cell bodies that are located in the PNS. That's a ganglia. When you have a group of nerve cell bodies in the CNS, we call that a nucleus. A nucleus is a group of nerve cell bodies in the CNS, but a group of nerve cell bodies in the PNS is called a ganglia. And one of the important ganglia that we'll be looking at is called the dorsal, dorsal, root ganglia. And I'll show you, if I can, on a picture, what a dorsal root ganglia is. Uh, what else do we have? We have an enteric plexus. This is like an inherent neural system inside the gut. And then we have sensory receptors of the skin. Uh, if you remember back to anatomy and physiology one, when you were taught the integumentary system, there was something called a Pacinian corpuscle, which were pressure receptors. There were tactile receptors for superficial touch. Um, there's pain receptors, temperature receptors. We need them in the periphery. All right, so make sure you know the difference between the CNS and the PNS. The central neural system, again, is just the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral neural system consists mainly of the cranial nerves and spinal nerves. And when we talk about cranial nerves and spinal nerves, both of these are have a sensory portion and a motor portion. So let's try and get an understanding of what we mean by sensory and motor. Simply put, 
if here's the brain and here's the spinal cord okay so up here is the brain and here's the spinal cord we can have information from the environment coming in and going up in the brain the information that ascends or goes up that's going to be our sensory information and the brain will process that information send information down and out to our body parts maybe our muscles maybe our organs and those are considered motor neurons all right so we have sensory neurons motor neurons or sensory fibers and motor fibers sensory go up and in they ascend up they ascend upward sometimes you'll hear the term afferent afferent with sensory information in your readings and with motor sometimes you'll hear the word efferent efferent sorry about my handwriting here i'm using my finger and my mouse pad so we have afferent which is sensory and we have motor which is efferent okay interchangeable terms and uh, these fibers connect the central neural system to muscles to glands and all sensory receptors that we have throughout our body so we have our central neural system brain and spinal cord remember that brain and spinal cord and then we have in the purple peripheral pns peripheral neural system and you can see the arrows pointing in different ways right so we have information going into the central nervous system that sensory input and then we have information exiting the central neural system going to different parts of our body like the skeleton the heart the muscle our glands the gastrointestinal tract and there's going to be motor output going out to all of those parts so when we have information coming in well it could be somatic sensory information uh, that's information coming from your joints coming from your muscles believe it or not your muscles and your joints do send sensory input into your brain and spinal cord that's how we know whether or not a muscle is being stretched too far when your foot has landed on the ground, when it's time to take the next step, when you're walking, if you're losing your balance, how your arms and legs flail out for that writing reflex to balance out your body. So that's somatic senses. Then we have special senses. Special senses is from like your eyes and your tongue is special senses and your ears are special senses and the apparatus inside the ear for balance. So all of that information comes in to the central neural system, the brain and the spinal cord. It processes that information and hopefully it comes in nice and clean and uninterrupted. So the information can go out uninterrupted, go to your somatic neural system, which controls your um, skeletal muscles, or it goes to the ANS. The ANS is the autonomic neural system and I want you to think, when you think of autonomic, I want you to think of automatic, right? Autonomic, automatic. Autonomic means self-law or self-regulating. And I want you to think of the accelerator and the brake when, uh, when you think of the autonomic neural system. Think of an accelerator or a brake. We call it the sympathetic or parasympathetics sympathetics for the most part and for simplicity it's the accelerator it tends to speed things up whereas the parasympathetic tends to calm things down okay so the sympathetics are from t1 to l2 in your spinal column and your parasympathetics uh because the sympathetics or t1 to l2 it's also referred to as the thoracolumbar output thoracolumbar output that makes sense right because it's t1 to l2 thoracolumbar speeds things up like uh, makes your heart race uh, makes your breathing uh increase 
uh, your pupils are going to dilate, right? If you're being chased by a tiger and you need to get out of the way, your pupils dilate, your heart's going to pump real fast to get all that blood and oxygen to your muscles. You can run and get out of danger's way. That's a sympathetic response. Parasympathetic is called the craniosacral outflow. It's called the craniosacral outflow. And that's because it involves cranial nerves. That's the cranial portion. It's cranial nerves, um, sorry, let me, it's cranial nerves, yeah, three. Whoops, sorry about that. Cranial nerve three, cranial nerve seven. It's always in Roman numeral when we write cranial nerves. Uh, three, seven, cranial nerve nine. and cranial nerve 10. So the cranial division, when we talk about craniosacral outflow for parasympathetic, it's cranial nerve three, seven, nine, and 10. And in a little bit, I'll tell you what their names are. But for now, I just want to talk about the numbers. And then the sacral segment, because it's craniosacral, is S2, second sacral segment, to S4. S2, three, and four, keep the feces off the floor. S2, three, and four, keep the feces off the floor. That's what that does. So parasympathetic slows things down. It's gonna slow down your heart rate, slow down your breathing. The only thing that parasympathetic is gonna speed up is your digestion. And the only thing that sympathetics will slow down is your digestion. So parasympathetic slows everything down, except for what? Except for digestion. And this is something you know, which is something you didn't know that you knew. Because you would tell, maybe your grandma would tell you, or your parents would tell you, or you tell your children, hey, after you eat, don't run outside, and don't go playing, and don't do sports, or don't go swimming, because digestion is a parasympathetic thing, whereas running around and exercising is a sympathetic thing. So you don't want your sympathetics engage when you're trying to digest the meal. That's why you don't want to argue or fight with someone when you're having a meal. You'll get indigestion. So that sympathetic and parasympathetic, they control the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and your glands. Okay, the enteric neural system is this in, uh, like inherent neural system that controls the GI tract or the gastro intestinal tract. So let's review the somatic neural system. It's completely voluntary. There are neurons from the skin and special sensory receptors to the central neural system. And then there's going to be motor neurons that go out to your skeletal muscle. That's the somatic neural system, whereas autonomic Remember, automatic, it's involuntary. This is where our sympathetics and our parasympathetics come into play. Sympathetic is going to speed everything up. Parasympathetics will slow everything down. Sympathetics is known as the thoracolumbar output because it's T1 to L2. And the parasympathetic is called the craniosacral output because it involves cranial nerves and sacral nerves. It's cranial nerves three, seven, nine, and 10, and sacral segments S2 to S4. The sympathetics is called your fight or flight response because it's going to uh, engage if you're in danger and you need to fight or you need to flight. You need to get out of danger's way. Whereas parasympathetic is called feed and breathe, feed and breathe. Okay, that's when it's involved or engaged. This is a good place to take our first break. When we come back, I'll continue with the neuron.